Good soil is at the root of every healthy plant. But what if your soil is not so good? How do you improve it? Today, I'm going to share with you two very powerful, super charged soil amendments, compost and biochar, that promise to help improve your soil structure, nutrient retention, and even lower your carbon footprint. And in this video, I'm going to help you decide which one is right for your garden. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Christina with Forever Food Forest, a channel where I explore ways of growing food without the use of herbicides, pesticides, or commercial fertilizers. And instead, I rely on permaculture principles and other natural farming techniques to grow food that's good for the garden and good for the planet. What are characteristics of good soil? Good soil is rich in nutrients. It has a slightly acidic pH between six and seven, and it absorbs water, but also drains fast. And it's porous with lots of aerated pockets, but most importantly, it is rich in biodiversity, which means that it houses and feeds numerous microorganisms such as fungi, bacteria, and even worms. And when it comes to enriching biodiversity, compost is the ultimate superstar. So what is compost? A lot of us have heard of it, many of us have used it, and some of us may have even tried to make it. And I've tried hot composting, cold composting, many different types of composting. But if you are new to the world of composting and you're wondering what it is, to put simply, it's decomposed organic matter. And the benefits of using compost are numerous in both clay and sandy soils. It helps to improve texture and water retention, aeration. It also acts as a slow release fertilizer, delivering both macro and micronutrients. But most importantly, compost is rich in microbiology. And it's these microbes that form a symbiotic relationship with plants, creating sort of an invisible web that acts as a way to deliver nutrients to plants' roots as well as help boost plants' defenses to protect them from pathogens and insects. And making compost is as easy as throwing all of that organic waste into a pile. Now, it does get a little bit more challenging if you're making hot compost, but cold composting just requires time. And there are many ways of making compost. You don't need any special equipment. You don't need any special tools. A pitchfork would help, but it's also not absolutely necessary because all of the hard work is being done by microorganisms that break down all of these large pieces of yard waste into tiny nutritious bits of black gold for your garden. And composting in our backyards is one of the ways that we can be a little more green. By reducing the amount of waste that ends up in a landfill and recycling our kitchen scraps and yard waste into nutritious fertilizer for growing our food. And now this is the point of the video where some troll is gonna jump in the comments and say, well, actually, composting produces more methane gas in the atmosphere than if you were to send it to a special recycling plant. And to that I say, yes, if I were to build a several kiloton pile of compost, it would produce a lot of methane. Correct, you're correct, but none of us have the resources to do that. And when done on a small scale, the benefits outweigh the risks. And as wonderful as compost is, it does have some disadvantages in our tropical climate. One of them being that it decomposes too fast, and the second one is that it leaches out of the soil during our rainy season. But this is where biochar comes in. So what is biochar? Biochar is biomass that has been burnt in the absence of oxygen. What the heck does that mean? Simply put, it's charcoal. And charcoal is just a big lump of carbon. And carbon is a great store of energy. Also, if you've ever used a carbon filter, you know that it has a negative charge and it attracts all these things to it, which is what makes it so excellent to use in sandy soils. It literally binds all the nutrients to it. Not only that, the porous large surface area creates a home for microorganisms. So right in front of me, we have a new garden bed that we're setting up. And right now we're filling it with uh, kitchen scraps, leaves, and other components of compost. And now let's add some biochar. 
The use of biochar in clay and sandy soils helps to improve their texture, aeration, and water retention. It also helps to moderate acidity, and most importantly, it acts as a long-term store of carbon, which is perhaps why it's been so promising in the use of sequestering carbon, because it takes it out of the atmosphere and locks it inside the soil. And this carbon also acts like a sponge, attracting nutrients, therefore creating fertile soil that lasts for centuries. Biochar on its own does not add a lot of nutritional value to the soil. The magic comes when it is soaked in a fertilizer or a compost tea because it works on a molecular level and traps the nutrients. And the use of biochar has shown long-term improvement when used in tropical soils. However, when it comes to its use in more temperate climates, the results were not as promising. Now biochar use is not without its controversies, one of them being that it is a man-made product. Carbon in this form does not really occur in large quantities naturally. However, the use of biochar has been recorded since ancient times when the native people of the Amazon used it to improve their soil. You see, Amazonian soils are depleted during the rainy season and the native peoples of that region started burying charred biomass and created what is known as terra preta. And this nutritious soil can still be found in the region to this day. Biochar is currently having a moment as the one cure-all to solve all your soil ills. But a lot of times we forget that there isn't just one cure-all. And sometimes the path of least resistance is the easiest one to take. And there is a time and a place to use biochar, just like there's a time to use its alternatives. If you live in a tropical climate with sandy soils and a rainy season, adding biochar to your soil is going to help retain those nutrients and create a more fertile, long-lasting soil. So how do you know when biochar is right for you? If you have a large property that you're clearing and you have a lot of biomass that you can't get a wood chipper to, making biochar is a great option. If you're dealing with invasive species that root easily and chopping them up into tiny pieces is not an option because they will all sprout up, using them to make biochar is a great alternative. However, if you live in a temperate climate or an area that's prone to wildfires, alternatives such as wood chipping, mulching, or simply burying your logs in the ground are a great alternative that will essentially accomplish the same thing. Sometimes the use of biochar is necessary, for example, in instances where hugo culture is not an option. It's also a great way to get rid of large amounts of yard waste that would otherwise just be turned into ash. So compost or biochar, which one is better? Well, it's not an easy answer because you can't have one without the other, especially if you live in Florida, that you work in symbiosis to improve your soil. But I also don't want you to get stuck on this idea that now you need to go get this one magical ingredient that's going to considerably improve your soil. Because there are many things that you can add to your soil that will accomplish the same idea. For example, wood chip mulch. Wood chip mulch is an excellent soil amendment that slowly releases nutrients back into the soil. It helps retain moisture and also is a great utilization of yard waste. And sometimes the best thing to add to your garden is the one that's readily available. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this was informative. Any questions, drop them down below. If you're new, please subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.